Salutations, fam. This is Dark Sawyer from Haltessia Gaming, and it's been a while. Um, yeah, last uh, last couple of weeks, I've been really, really busy, and I just haven't really felt like uploading deck profiles for the decks I was playing. Um, that past format, it's like I didn't really feel like uploading a Tempi deck profile because there wasn't really, there's not really much deck building to do with Tempi. Um, if you guys are interested in it, because like I don't play Trident Dragon and I play like a different Link OTK line. So if you guys are interested in that, I might like make like a small video kind of covering that specifically, but I don't really think I need to like post a Tempi deck profile that talks about the deck building theory of Tempi. Um, but yeah, I wanted to upload a deck profile because I just, you know, this past weekend I won a win a box event. Um, went undefeated, I played Resonator. Um, so that's a deck that I would actually have been playing for a while. Um, I just haven't uploaded a deck profile for it. Um, I've won several tournaments with it at this point. I won a bunch of tournaments with it during Fire King Snake Eye format. Um, pretty much Resonator was the deck I was playing before Tempai. And then, you know, this past weekend I decided to play Resonator again because I wanted to see how it would do in the current format. Um, with the inclusion of Tempai alongside Fire King Snake Eyes and, you know, the way the format has kind of shaken up post Legacy of Destruction. And uh, the deck's still crazy. Um, and it has a hilariously easy Tempai matchup, which was very relevant because there was a lot of Tempai at this tournament. Um, so yeah, I wanted to go ahead and upload a deck profile because this is a deck that I feel is kind of underexplored and I want to kind of talk my thoughts about it. Um, so uh, there were some changes I've made to the deck from like the tournament because there was like, you know, a couple of things I didn't like about the deck list in the tournament, even though I did go undefeated. So I will, you know, mention what those changes are. So if you're curious about playing the 40 card list that I played at the tournament and you like you want to also play a 40 card list, you can do that as well. But I also want to, you know, talk about the changes and whatnot. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hop right into this deck profile um of resonator this deck i got the idea for this during fire king snake eye format from a mbt twitter thread where he was talking about i think it was like what decks are people playing outside of snake eyes and i saw one of the comments was about resonator and they basically described it as budget snake eyes and i became curious about you know that deck building theory uh i looked at their list and i basically you know went to the lab and cooked with it and I actually really liked the deck. Um, I did well with it back then, and you know, obviously I won another tournament with it. Um, so yeah. Um, the I am playing, I think this list is 44. Um, but yeah, the original list was 40. So three Bone Archfiend, two Witch. Um, these were the normal summons in the deck. I actually really like Witch's versatility in regards to being a normal summon. Um, Witch is not a one card combo, but if you have like Crimson Resonator alongside Witch, um, this allows for some versatile combo extensions, but it also, and the most important reason why I like Witch is it searches hand traps. So in a scenario where like your combo gets stopped because you can search hand traps with this deck, even if your combo doesn't go all the way through, like you have hand traps, so you're still good a lot of the time. Um, this is one of the changes. Uh, so originally I was playing one Soul Resonator, but I bumped it up to two. Um, I was playing one Vision and one Synchron Resonator, all of which have been bumped up to two. Uh, since because one of the one thing that I will say happened, I think it was like one game where I was like, man, I kind of wish I had a second vision resonator in the deck. Um, and the thing about it was like, I was getting hand trapped through my combo so often that I didn't realize that the 40 card build didn't have enough resonators for me to start the combo with something other than crimson resonator. And for me to resolve crimson resonator and summon two, so I was only able to summon one. I still ended up winning that game, but it was just like, hmm. Um, so honestly, like you could, like with the 40 card list, you could just play like literally one extra vision resonator and I would have been able to summon two, but I just figured, I think I added three because I added the extra soul resonator, the extra synchron resonator and the extra vision resonator. And then I'm playing one copy of Crimson Resonator. Um, 
this card is like stupidly ridiculously searchable um so it's not hard to open it and open access to it but like after the first turn where you've already like when you have nothing on the board this card becomes so much worse so um yeah that's why i'm only playing one because you know you want to resolve it that one time and then after that you don't really use it anymore um one copy of of Ubaloop. uh this card is so ridiculous um because one of the things about the deck that i experienced was that Pretty much um, against Tempai, my boards were always getting like completely cleared. But and like, honestly, just being able to go Bon Arch Fiend summon back, Oofa Loop summon back, and then Red Zone summon back and just rebuild the board every turn was always really strong. And um, e a lot of times I didn't even have Red Zone or like because they would like clear the board completely. So literally just being able to summon back Oofa Loop and Bone Arch Fiend and then play like that was always like really strong um two copies of stone sweeper this is just an extra rota for the resonators um on very rare occasions it is an extender because if there's a fill spell on the board it can special summon itself and it is a fiend monster so um that's one of the things about the card that comes up every now and again in regards to some extensions from the extra deck but for the most part it's just rota i'm playing two copies of the bestial lubellion I only own two copies of this card, um, but it's fine. Just draw it. Um, yeah, so Lubellion, I do play some Bestials in here. I actually, um, the list that the guy who posted in the Twitter thread said that he preferred most was the non-Bestial version because you have more room for non-engine. But um, the Bestials are non-engine a lot of the time. And the thing about Lubellion and the Bestials is that they allow you to play through interaction Right, they allow you to keep playing after you get hand trapped and whatnot. And a lot of the times, I did end up basically just playing Bestial Control, and just having this in the deck just mattered so much a lot of the time. So um, that's it for the engine monsters. Moving on to the spells, one of the main changes that I'm doing that I haven't seen in any list. I'm playing three copies of Allure of Darkness. This not being once per turn, you're just drawing through your deck. A, pretty much like 90% of your deck is dark, so like. This card's almost never dead. Um, and then, like, when it's paired with, like, Branded Regain, like, you draw three, and it's just... It's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, three Allure. Three copies of Resonator Call. This card's also really good. Uh, again, not once per turn. Um, three copies of Crimson Gaia. This card is once per turn as a continuous spell. So one of the things about this deck that is the main appeal of it to me is this card right here. Because in comparison to like Snake Eyes, and this is part of the reason why it was called Budget Snake Eyes, is because you have a bunch of one card combo starters that build a decent board and you have a decent amount of space for non-engine. But the main difference that I experience with this deck in those type of game states where it's just like, you know, when we get into hand trap wars, I almost always win the game. Because while they have to like top deck into follow up, I just always have it. Because I can always just summon Bone Archfiend back. I can summon back Uvalu. And then Crimson Guy can add back from Grave or search from deck every turn. So it's just like in a scenario where they have to like top deck stuff, I don't have to top deck stuff. I just always have my follow up. Um, and then we have the one Chaos Space. Most of your deck is dark. This just, you know, helps search Lubellion. Sometimes you get the draw effect as well um one foolish you know really good starter one regain one copy of branded beast uh one red zone right um and that's basically it for the rest of the engine um the rest of it's like non-engine um i'm playing the one copy of archfiend eccentric sometimes this is a uh, searchable off soul resonator uh searchable background removal searchable monster removal sometimes you just need to like clear stuff and just having this in the deck is nice um yeah i like having it in the deck um you know your bestials one magna one druis one serenir and then i have you know more non-engine i've got two ash two ogre one meister because it's searchable one valor triple imperm um the deck size is very small you you draw a lot i think i'm playing 12 hand traps um but it's like you draw a lot and you have a lot of searchability and post side it's very easy to like just do stuff that just auto wins the game a lot of the time uh, moving on to the extra deck 
Um, there is some stuff I want to talk about in regards to the extra deck as far as for, like, cards I'm not playing and like why I don't play them. Um, so yeah, but for the most part, the extra deck is... I don't really know what a standard extra deck looks like. I mean, I guess like they don't all play this. I'm not doing anything like super crazy out there though. Um, so yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't seen anybody do that. So anyway, I'm playing two copies of Red Rising Dragon. I know very commonly people play three, but um, ever since like, I think early like February or something, whenever like Fire King Snake Eye Form was really popping off, I started playing this deck. Um, I always played three. Uh, to this day, I've only had the third Red Rising Dragon come up exactly one time. And that was before I was playing like Chaos Space and like really having the idea of, oh wait, I can just recycle the Red Rising Dragon. Um, and it's like, you do need two for some of the combos. Um, and there are a lot of times where it's like the first one will get stopped and then you just make another one and then you just do the combo again. <laughs> like it's so stupid. Um, so yeah, two Red Rising, two Scar Red. This cards, these two cards are very, very good. Um, Scar Red's, um, treated as Red Dragon Arch Fiend. When, you know, a card gets destroyed, you can bring this back just to have like the extra follow up. Um, Yeah. Then I have my two copies of Red Dragon Archfiend, the original one, and then the one copy of Scarlight, and then that's, you know, my Red Dragon Archfiends. Um, yeah. Then I have the one copy of Cooley Belt. Sometimes you make that going second to, like, help break through boards. Um, the 100 Ice Dragon, this is the card that I realized that, like, I don't see a lot of people play. Um, but this card has the effect to banish a card, a dark from the grave, and then you basically copy its effects. So in some scenarios where like your Red Rising Dragon or like your Crimson Resonator gets negated, you can make this next to like the Red Rising Dragon, right? And then banish the Crimson Resonator. It copies the effect of Crimson Resonator, and then you can just go Crimson Resonator special, well, effect of this to summon two. Um... And that's really, really good. Um, it's an extension that doesn't always come up, but when you have the hand to be able to do it, you're going to wish you had it. Uh, the one copy of Bills. Um, yeah. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. So um, a lot of the time, if I know I'm playing against Tampa, I literally just summon this and say, go. Um... Right, obviously I'm not just summoning this, but it's like, it's this usually instead of like the last Synchro 8. So it'd usually be like Hot Red, Supernova, Dispatter in this, or like, you know, depending on the level of like hand trap you get. But the point is I'll make this alongside my normal board instead of something else. And they have to deal with my board. And then even if they are able to clear my board, they still have to deal with this. Um, so yeah, Bills is pretty good into Tempai. Uh, the one copy of Bane, um, I make this card all the time um, because usually with a lot of my extension, I want to actually have a Red Dragon Archfiend monster on the board so that I can trigger Red Zone to like pop something. And in grind game scenarios, being able to use this to like tribute off a Bone Archfiend that you just summon back to summon back like Hot Red or something is really good. Um, and then also like the uh, Tuner summon effect comes up sometimes. Which is really, really silly. Um, but yeah. The One King Calamity. I almost never make this, to be honest with you. It's like... I think historically, from the time... Like, to this day, I think I've made it twice. Um, and both the times I made it, it was while going second into a board. I summoned this to, like, basically turn off their board to, like, solidify the OTK. Um, obviously, like, you can make it on your opponent's turn if you, like, set it up going first, but I've yet to actually do that. Um, because truthfully, a lot of the time, just my normal board is enough to win the game. And then the last card in the extra is Supernova. This is another card that is really good against Tempai. Um, so obviously, banishing everything is really good, um, because it's a soft once per turn. So it's like you can banish all their stuff, summon it back, banish everything again, summon it back... Because it's like you can summon it back with Dispatter, you can summon it back with like Red Zone, right? And then also it summons itself back. Um, but also the main thing about it is that like, so the main thing about Bills that makes it hard to out is that like it can't be destroyed by card effects. So it's like the whole Black Rose play just doesn't do anything to it. 
but the Black Rose Flea also doesn't do anything to this monster because this card also can't be destroyed by card effects. And then, you know, like Bills, it's also just really hard to kill this because both monsters are just really big. Because Supernova also gains 500 for every tuner in the grave. So on average, it's going to be 65. And there's not a card that Tenpai plays that can kill this by battle. So a lot of the time, you can just have this on the board. Um, and because you're going to get to, like, banish a bunch of times, like, this is also just really good against Supernova. Um, I mean, against Tenpai. And also, it's just good in general because, like, banishing the whole field is kind of stupid. Um, yeah. I don't summon it all the time, but it's just, like, if I have, like, see an avenue to summon it without, like, committing, like, my whole hand, I'm going to do it. Because this card is just that crazy. Um, and also, like, the deck just kills really easily because of the fact that all your monsters are just huge. Um, so, yeah, that's the 50 card extra deck. Um, moving on to the side deck. First card, always the same, Dino Wrestler Pancratops. Um, yeah, not much to say about him. He's always there. He's still good in this deck. I'm um, being able to summon him, tribute him off, pop something, and then Special Crimson Resonator because it doesn't conflict. Because, you know, he moves himself off the board. Uh, three copies of Nibiru. Um, honestly, like, this one is like does have some anti-synergy with um, Crimson Resonator. Um, because, obviously, if this is on the board, you can't tribute you know, to like, you can't special summon it, but um, that's why you're only playing one Crimson Resonator anyway, so it's like not the end of the world. Um, and usually what you'll do is you'll just like send the nib to summon like the Bone Archfiend, and then, um, you know, like, like either special summon a tuner or like normal summon something or whatever. Um, and then you just bring back the Crimson Resonator with like Red Rising Dragon and do the combo that way. And also, you know, as mentioned before, you can just do, like, the 100 eyes play and just never even summon the Crimson Resonator. Like, there's a lot of ways to, like, do it. Uh, two copies of Ghost Spell. Um, just has a lot of coverage into a lot of matchups. Um, I use this on Tempi a lot. Most of the time I'm using it against either the uh, Synchro 7 or the Phaedra. Um, and then we have two copies of Droll and Lockbird. Um, yeah, I... Did I? How many times did I use Droll? I don't like. I didn't really use Droll that much. Um, I think I used it once, and it was like okay. Uh, two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. Card's good. Uh, one copy of Feather Duster. Two copies of Dimensional Barrier. One copy of Etude of the Branded. Um, this is Macro Cosmos, and it also enables the Calamity play. And then the last card in the side is like, in my opinion, the funniest card in the side, uh, Red Screen. So what this card does is a searchable, searchable by all the red dragon archfiend searchers, and uh, yeah, first line attacks. Your opponent's monsters cannot declare attacks. So like against Tempai, so you have Supernova that's good against Tempai, Bills that's good against Tempai, and then Red Screen just like hard counters them. And very commonly, you can have access to all three of them in addition to like your your board. So it's like. It's very, very difficult for them to win going first. And that's completely ignoring that sometimes you just calamity them and they lose anyway. So, um, yeah, that's the deck profile. Anyway, let me go grab those cards I was talking about because I do want to talk about um, those. Like, if it's like, you know, the uh, one specific extra deck monster that I see included a lot that I'm choosing not to play. So actually, we're going to go back to the extra deck real quick, because when I went over there to grab the cards, I realized that there were two cards missing from extra deck. This is only 13 cards. Um, yeah, so the reason they are missing is because I play these cards in a lot of decks, and very notably, I put them into my Blue Eyes deck, because I was playing that. Um, yeah, so uh, I do in fact play Dispatter in Hot Red. I I straight up didn't notice, but uh, yeah, I was playing these in my extra deck. <laughs> um, yeah, I make these, I, I think I even mentioned a bunch of times where I was talking about like, oh yeah, my Emperor is usually a hot rare dish fighter, super. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely did play these two. They were in my extra deck. But anyway, moving on to the cards that I have um, seen people play that I have not, that I chose myself not to play. So um, we have Red Nova Dragon, 
So the thing about Red Nova Dragon, it also cannot be destroyed by card effects. It gets bigger for each tuner, similar. It's basically like Supernova Light. You know, it can be destroyed by card effects and it gets big, like really, really big, right? Um, but it also has the interaction of being able to negate attacks. And you might think, well, why would I ever play this over Supernova? This is notably significantly easier to summon compared to Supernova. So that's one of the reasons I've seen people say for why they play this card, um, but I personally chose not to play it. Um, and then also we have Void Ogre Dragon. So this is actually a card I see that's pretty staple in this deck. Um, but I personally have never summoned this card ever um, because of the fact that like, you know, rather than have another potential negate, a lot of times I'd rather have like the Scar Red on board or like a Bills or just something that is like makes my board a little bit harder to crack rather than just having another negate. Um, especially because this negate is almost never going to be alive because I almost never end my turn with no cards in hand. And usually like I'll have like hand traps and stuff in my hand. And even in the scenario where I like, I might have hand traps in my hand and you know, I might use my hand traps and then have no hand traps by the, some point in my turn. Um, by the time that I do that, they're passing turn anyway. So like the Void Ogre still wouldn't usually be doing anything. Um, and the thing about it is that like, it did come up exactly one time this weekend in like a grind game scenario where I just had no cards in hand. And I had to use my whole hand to like keep playing. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, but yeah, I, um, had to make it. I would have been able to make this in a grind game, but and I was just like, dang, I can't believe this would have actually done something. But um, I made bills instead and that won me the game as well. So it didn't really matter. It's just that there was a situation where I would have been able to make this and it would have been good. Um, and then as far as like main deck stuff, I am opting not to play Prosperity um, because while yes, you absolutely can play it, it does lower the ceiling of what you're able to do like a little bit. Um, cause like, obviously like you can't chaos space draw, you can't regain draw if you use prosperity. Um, and like, obviously this adds like drastic consistency to the deck, but like, I don't feel as though consistency is a problem the deck has, you know, this deck has a bunch of one card combo starters and I'm not even playing all of them at maxed out copies, you know? Um, so I didn't really feel like this was necessary because like I'm not playing, uh, I think it's called like Resonator Command. I'm not playing, you know, max copies of like Stone Sweeper or Soul Resonator, right? Um, right, like I'm not even like playing all the starters I can play. So it's like, I didn't feel like the deck was inconsistent and like banishing your extra deck affects your grind game a lot of the time so it's like i didn't feel that the added consistency was worth it because like i don't feel as though consistency is a problem with this deck um another card uh we have the wandering king wild win um this is a nice extender that had to have um it comes up every now and again um but like, I didn't feel it was necessary and I it was playing a 40 card list. Um, this is a card that's like, I don't think it's bad to play, but it's just, I don't feel it's like 100% necessary. And personally this past week and I never missed it. So I do, I think like out of the entire time I've been playing the deck, there's been exactly one game where it mattered. And it's like, I was going second into a board. They stopped like all my plays and then like, Soul Resonator searching this allowed me to make a Kui Belt to help potentially keep breaking the board, I guess. Um, so yeah, there was that. And I think I had like um, Synchron Resonator in hand, so I would have been able to like keep playing after that, but it's just, that's like one game. <laughs> and it's just like every other game, it's like it just hasn't mattered that much. Um, Red Resonator, um, a lot of people play this for time or like, you know, they use it as part of the combo because it is another Resonator that you could summon. And sometimes like you just normal summon it, it just summons a resonator as well. So it's like, it's not a bad card in this deck at all. It's just, you know, I'm trying to like trim the deck down. And when you're trying to stick close to 40, a lot of those like just okay cards do end up getting cut. Uh, and then Scarlet Security is a card that like I have cited in the past. And uh, it's just Duster if you control Red Dragon Archfiend. So against like back row decks is good. 
But um, between like Red Zone and Branded Beast and the Cosmics and the Duster, right? I didn't feel like I really needed that much for back row. So um, those are the cards I'm opting not to play in the deck and why I'm opting not to play them. Um, yeah, the like I'm not doing any like spicy combos or anything like that. It's just pretty standard resonator stuff. It's just the ratios. I finally found like something I liked in regards to the ratios. Um, so yeah, that, this has been Dark Solarian from How to See Gaming. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and share it with your friends. Um, there was something. Oh, the Patreon, right, right. Um, if you are interested in seeing my decks, uh, my deck list, as soon as they're done, as soon as I talk with them and see the theorycraft, all that good stuff, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. It will be in the description. Um, you get to talk with me about deck building, all that good stuff. I have noticed um, a lot of people, like a couple of people who have joined the Patreon Discord and then they just never talk. Um, so it's like, I'm not, I'm not complaining, but I'm just like, you know, reminding you guys like, hey, if you join the Patreon, like you are allowed to talk to us and ask questions and stuff. But it's just very often I just see people join and just don't do anything. <laughs> And it's like, you know, some, I imagine some people are just, you know, doing it because they want to like support, you know, the channel, all that. And I appreciate it 100%, but it's just like, it feels weird, you know, um, cause it's just like, like, did you need anything? <laughs> but, um, yeah, also in regards to the Patreon, um, a lot of the deck profiles that I didn't upload because I didn't really feel like they were relevant are on the Patreon discord. Um, because again, I post everything. It's like anytime I'm going to a tournament, I'll be like, hey, I'm playing this. Um, there's another deck that I actually do want to upload a deck profile for potentially in the future, but I haven't actually managed to win a tournament with it yet because I'm still refining it. And that is Runic Lightsworn. Uh, I think that deck is super cool. Um, it's super cool, super fun. The Lightsworn cards are crazy and I've been having a lot of fun with them, um, but I just haven't won a tournament with them yet. So we got to figure that one out. Anyway, this has been Dark Slayer from How Tasty Gaming. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Please go drink some water.